Today we are asking the question, how happy are you? How happy are you? Everyone in this audience and the five people standing with me right now took a revealing test, and I want you at home to take it too, to find out how happy you are. Meet David, he's 53, he's been a funeral director, looking at dead people. <laughs> Every day for 30 years, funeral director. Okay, the results. Oh. Thank oh, you. David. <laughs> they had to <me>. David. <laughs> I took second pretty close. Mr. Looking at Dead People all day? <laughs> <laughs> this audience thinks that David, <laughs> looking at dead people all day, is the happiest person. So we'll be right back. Back in a moment. I was 13 years old, and we had a new pastor come to the town where we were residing. And he preached his first sermon. He spoke for like 11 minutes, so he told me afterwards. And he gave an invitation for people who would like to accept Christ into their lives. And it just, I could hear this voice saying, you need me to be a part of your life. And so I made a decision that night to invite Christ into my life. And then I remember lying in bed sometime later, and trying to f process it all and figure out what am I going to do with my life. And so I hear him saying, David, if you will let me uh, lead your life, direct your paths, I will take you places you never dreamed or thought possible. And as a 13-year-old trying to figure out life, I thought, this is a pretty good deal. And so I said, God, I'm going to take you up on this. And so that was the beginning of an incredible journey so I had two opportunities before me. There was um, Bible college or there was funeral service. Now we'd had some deaths in our families and I was impressed with the way in which the funeral home looked after things. And it just, it, it sort of twigged my curiosity. So here's the interesting thing. So now I applied to Bible college, I applied to Humber College, I applied too late in the year. I, I was rejected in both places. So I had a year to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do. So, all right, I decided to take a job at the local uh, town hospital. It was one of the most incredible years of my life because I got to work uh, with some professionals who loved to teach, so they taught me different things. I got to work in the emergency ward, prepping people for surgery. I got into the operating room a couple times, looking after people after surgery. I got to work in the morgue. So I assisted pathologists with autopsies in the morgue. Little did I know that had my application to Humber College been reviewed that first year, if I got it in on time, I would have never gotten into the course because they were taking between 600 and 800 applicants each year they're looking at and accepting 115 into the course. I didn't have enough experience, but God knew. And so when my application went through the next year, automatically I went right into the top of the list and I was accepted the next year. That's God's plan. I didn't understand it at the time. Uh, and then I decided that, okay, if this is where God is taking me, this is the path he's opened up for me, um, I think it's important to take what gifts and abilities and talents that you have and you develop them to the best of your ability. Now that doesn't mean that I was going to become the best funeral director there is. I'm not. But I become the best funeral director that I can with the abilities and talents that God gave me. And that's all He expects from us. That, I believe, is the call of every human being today. When I'm involved with funeral services, I know what's going on in people's minds. What they're trying to say in that funeral service is this person did what it was that they were created to do. Some people, a lot of people, miss that. We are all in ministry. It's not just the pastor behind the pulpit. We are all called to minister. And so and he places us strategically, I believe, in the workplace. As you're walking in your calling, God just opens the doors and it becomes natural. So I get to sit down with people or they're brought, they come into the funeral hall, I get to sit down with them. And it just happens. I don't even have to work at it. It just, they bring it up. I've really come to the conclusion that what I've, as I've been studying happiness and people pursue happiness, you do not pursue happiness. Because if you pursue happiness, happiness I believe is based upon happenings and things. But joy is a condition of one's heart. It's deeper and it's more lasting, and it's what you want in your life. You want joy, you don't want happiness, because happiness is fleeting. 
and it's not lasting. And you know, sometimes people, when you talk about, we talk about joy and happiness again, is to, to um, are you always happy? Of course not. I'm, I'm a human being, God may be human. So there's times when I go through some really difficult situations, even in the funeral home here sometimes, you're in some sad situations. And the difficult situations you go through, I don't like them, but when I find myself in them, I will step back and I will say, God, I don't like this and I'm uncomfortable here right now and this is a challenge for me, but what are you trying to teach me? Because I know he's got me there in those circumstances to teach me something, to prepare me for what he's got planned down the road. You go through the experience, you learn from that experience, you glean something from it, and it's in preparation for where he's taking you down the road. And my life has just been like this all, because again, I'm walking in his calling, I'm following his calling, I'm listening to his voice, and it's the most incredible, exciting life that anybody can ever have.